let's take a look at block state properties. All right, we found ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the difference between blocks and block states, and then diving into block state properties a little bit. And for that, we're going to break out the craziest tool ever. And that is, of course, indeed, PowerPoint. Now, what we have is a little bit of a presentation. So I'm just going to go through a few things. And the example block that we're going to use is basically the redstone ore block, because that is probably the easiest example that there is in Minecraft for the block state properties. And we're going to look at the class in just a moment. But first, let's go through some theory. So the general idea is that the block class in itself is a singleton pattern. What does that mean? Well, it basically means that we have one field for one particular block. So when we go into our mod blocks class, or when we go into our blocks class in vanilla, we can see that, for example, for the redstone or block, we create one field. And that is always going to be the only place where we have this new redstone or block. We can have maybe a different variant does exist. But overall, we only create one field for a block. Now you might say, well, but there are multiple blocks in the world. If I set down a redstone or block, and then I set one down two blocks next to it, then we have two different blocks. How does that work? Well, those are block states. And that is actually a very, very important distinction here. So you can think of block states as block instances inside of the world. So block states actually save the position, some block properties. So those would be the properties that we actually assign when we're creating the block. So the, this, the block behavior properties, and then also the block state properties, which we're going to see in just a moment. Now the block states, they are basically saved by the world, and they can also only be changed by the world or the level. And this usually happens on the server. So this is done by you doing level dot set block, and then passing in some parameters. Now, the block state properties, what are those exactly? Well, we can see the very, well, let's say, shortened version of the redstone or block. As an example here, we have a Boolean property called lit. And this is just equal to some already defined Boolean property here. And we define those properties in a custom block class. And we do need this create block state definition method to be overridden. That is very important. And this is actually all that we really need. As a general summary for block state properties, they always have a value, so they can never be null. Block can have multiple different properties. So we've seen this with the stairs, as you can see, with the stairs and with the doors, for example. Now, it's also very interesting is that the values of those block state properties can then be referred to in different model files. So basically, what that means is that we've seen the block states JSON file for some blocks that refer to different block model files, depending on the values of their block state properties. And that is really the power of this. So in the redstone or example right here, this is lit false, so this is lit true. So we're basically only lighting this up. It's not the craziest thing, but it is still pretty cool that we can basically change the appearance of the block based on the block state property. And you have to do it with a block state property, you can't just add a Boolean, just a Boolean variable to the block. Because of course, this block here, right, this redstone or block is only created once. So if you had a Boolean inside of it, and not a Boolean property, what would just happen is that for every block that exists in the world, so every redstone or block in that case would light up at the same time. And that's, of course, not what you want in this case. That is the difference, right? The difference is between having the block state property, which is only applied to the particular block state, so the particular block in front of you, and not all of the ones that have the same type. How do we change block states? Well, we change block states by setting the block at a particular position, right? So we have to basically get the world, and then we change the this at the particular position. And then we're setting the value of a block state property to basically, well, a particular value. And then the three here is just a particular flag for the updating behavior. That's pretty much all that there is to it. The presentation is available as a cheat sheet in the description below as well. So you can take a look at that and then basically go through this one more time if you need to. But for the time being, we're going to switch to IntelliJ. And what we're going to do is we're going to press the shift key twice. And then we're going to search for the redstone or block right here. And we're going to double click on this. And there we are. So we can see right here, we have the Boolean property lit. And it is, of course, used in well, a few moments here. But what is important for us is first of all, right, 
here. So the create block state the definition method, you can see that the lit property is added to the builder right here. This is extremely important. This has to happen. And then we can also see, for example, in the random tick right here, you can see level set block at a particular position. And then we're setting the value of lit to false in this case, and then adding the flag three in this case. So we can hover over this and we can actually see what the flags mean. Usually, it really doesn't matter for us at the moment. Three is the one that we really want to have basically all of the time. And this is all still a little bit, well, I wouldn't say necessarily esoteric, but it's very much just theory. So how about some, well, actual implementation? That's what we're going to do. So we're going to implement a sort of lamp that we can right click and then we can turn it on and off. So in the custom package, right click new Java class, and this is going to be the citrine lamp block. And this is, of course, going to extend the block class. There you go. And then we're going to hover over this create constructor matching super. And if this annoys you, then you can just click on it, press shift F6 and just change it to properties right here. And then let's add the Boolean property clicked. So we're just going to say public static final Boolean property called clicked. And this is equal to Boolean property dot create with the name clicked. And then end this with a semicolon. That's it. Now, of course, we need to override the create block state definition method right here. So we're just going to autocomplete this with tab. And then we're going to say pbuilder dot add. And then we're just going to add the clicked property. There you go. And that's it. Then now this lamp block, if we were to create it, now has the click property associated with it. Now at this moment in time, we're not actually changing it. So how we're going to change it? Well, we're going to use the use method right here, this one. And what we're going to do is we're going to say first of all, that we're going to return the interaction result success right here. And then beforehand, we're going to just make this a little bit nicer to read. There you go. And then we're going to say if not the level is client side, and the p hand is equal to interaction hand dot main hand, then we're going to do some stuff. So once again, this is very important here that we use not is client side. So we're going to put a exclamation mark in front of is client side to negate this. And then we're going to say this is only done when we right click this with the main hand. And then we're just going to say boolean is current state is equal to p state dot get value. So this is how you can get the value clicked. So this simply gets the value of this particular boolean property. And then we're just going to say p level dot set block at this position. So this is the position that we've clicked, the right clicked the state dot set value of clicked. And this is going to be not current state. So we're going to negate current state. So basically just alternating between the two. So when you right click, and the current state is true, then we're going to set it to false. And if it's false, we're going to set it to true, or should be pretty self explanatory, all things considered, and not too crazy. Now the citrine lamp block, of course, we still need to create this in the mod blocks class. Now, So let's just copy over the winter window. And let's just see what we can do. So this is going to be the citrine underscore lamp. And of course, for the name as well, this is citrine underscore lamp. And this is going to be a citrine lamp block. Now what we're going to do is something very interesting. First of all, this is going to be a property of let's say material material dot metal. And instead of having the no occlusion, what we're going to do is we're going to say first of all, like strength two requires tool for drop. And then let's say we don't have any sound yet, but we have a light level. So this is going to be an interesting one. So the light level right here, you can see takes in a two int function of block state. Now a lot of you might say what the frick is a two in function, it's not actually that crazy. It basically is a supplier, but instead of just having empty parentheses, we have something in there. So we can say, say state, then we can do this. And now we can use the state to determine what we're going to return. And a to in function, when we think about it, well, it probably wants an integer returned. And that is exactly right. So what we can do is we can just say 15. And in this way, now we've created a lamp that is always going to be on. But we actually only want this to be on when the state is true. So what we can say is we can say state dot get value citrine lamp block that clicked. And then we're going to use the ternary operator to return 15 if this is true, and zero if this is false. And with this, we've created a right clickable lamp that is only on when well, the actual lamp is on basically.
That's pretty much all that we need to do for the block. Now the block states, of course, are what's also interesting, but let's first of all add the translation just so that we have this, of course. This is always something that I might just forget, so I'm just going to copy this over. There you go. Of course, all of the code is also available to you in the description below, GitHub repository, and individual gists as well. And the Citrine Lab block states, let's just copy this over, and you're going to see, ah, this now makes sense, because we have a click property that can either be false or true. We're basically looking at different models. So we're looking at the Citrine Lab off or Citrine Lab on, and those are just two different models, which then point to two different textures. That's actually how easy it is. And this is a completely custom one in this moment. So this is completely custom. You can, of course, make other custom properties here. So if I, for example, middle mouse button, click on this, and then I believe I can press Control H on the property. There you go. You can also make integer properties or enum properties as well. So in theory, you can even make completely custom properties that would also work. But usually those three or, you know, three and a half, let's say, uh, different types of properties should be more than enough to well create sort of the block that you want to and let's just go and copy over the two block model files as well so this is going to be in the block folder of course there you go so let's just copy those over and you can see these are now completely normal block model json files they just point to a particular block texture and then there is only one item file because of course in this case, the item model file just points to the off texture in this case, or the off lamp, which points to the off texture. And then let's also get the two on and off block textures over here as well. And we can actually take a look at those as well, just so that you can basically see. So this is the off texture. This is the on texture. Just a second. There you go. So, of course, there is quite a difference here when the actual light level also changes. You know, the difference becomes a little bit more contrasted even more. So... There you go. But that is pretty much all of the things that we need to do. So the really important thing is that we don't forget the create block state definition method. This is one of the most important ones. And you can basically expand this however you want to. Once again, you can take a look at things like the door for some examples, right? We've seen the block state JSON file is pretty crazy. So if we, for example, say door block, right? And then we're going to go into the door block. You can see there are all of the properties that we've basically seen. Now, this is far more complicated than, for example, the redstone ore block. This is why I said the redstone ore block sort of is the perfect example to see because it doesn't have all of this clutter that is, you know, look at this freaking craziness. I mean, this is that's a lot. But what you can here see is actually very interesting. If you have multiple properties, you can just add them like this into the builder. So that's pretty cool. And like I said, always go to the external libraries, take a look at some of the classes that might have some properties it can just help you out and it's the best one of the best resources basically for everything we've added all of the things that we need to add so let's see if it works all right we found ourselves back in minecraft and as you can see the citrine lamp has been added to the game and let's right click it and you can see it works perfectly fine just like we would expect it to you know all of them work independently of each other and they give off a nice light here and this is pretty much the general idea we can also just take a look at the redstone ore block just for the you know just for the sake of argument we set it down and i right click this you can see now it is also giving off particles and also a little bit of a light glow here so you can see this is pretty much the idea of the block state properties pretty cool all things considered right block state properties overall is a very interesting topic quite important for a lot of things as well so I can highly recommend just playing around with this a little bit, being open to experimentation. The best thing to do, just try and work with this. I can also highly recommend maybe taking a look at some GitHub repositories for popular mods to get a feel of how, because they use properties in even more interesting ways. And yeah, that's pretty much the idea here. Right, but that would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. I also want to thank all of my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting me and this channel. It is very much appreciated. And special golden thanks go out to MC Arctic for actually supporting me with the gold block tier. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. So, yeah.